All right, guys, today we're talking about Stackstorm. Uh, thank you for coming here and hearing about what is the if this and that for DevOps automation. And uh, we only have 20 minutes to cover what is Stackstorm, show some use cases, and tell you about what is the current state of Stackstorm and what's coming next. So, what is the Stackstorm? Um, well, we build something which is a very generic, event driven, automation platform. And this thing is very difficult to explain. So to explain that simply, we're usually trying to say what Stackstorm is like. And Stackstorm is like if this then that. But for DevOps. And like in this then that, something happens and then you take some action. Just like in this, because it is for DevOps, in, in DevOps all the artifacts are code it is exactly like that. There is a trigger, something happens, maybe sensor or Nagios event handler. Here is a criteria, the pattern matches, and here is an action, take some remediation things. Of course, we have a nice UI that we hammered home the same point. Stackstorm is, if this happens, run this action. And I think at this point we're done, you know what Stackstorm is, uh, and you can go around and enjoy the show. Uh, but, you know, like, uh, let's give a little bit more details. So, uh, the main ingredients of Stackstorm is, that's again, that's an open source platform that sits on top of your existing infrastructure. You have clouds, you have Kubernetes, Docker, OpenStack, Amazon, VMware. You have the typical DevOps tools like Chef, Puppet, Ansible. You have a lot of your scripts. You have the business things like Slack or Jira or uh, GitHub, and on top of that, we have the sensors that are responsible for inbound integrations. That means something happens. It might be a monitoring event, or it might be the change in the temperature in this room, or it might be someone came by the Stackstorm booth and tweeted about Stackstorm, and then it goes into the rules. When this happens, what kind of action do we take? And then it takes the actions, and actions are usually simple and atomic. And to stitch them all together, you require the workflows. We use Mistral as a workflow engine. We're actually one of the Mistral contributors. And then the actions, again, we have a bunch of actions out there on the Stackstorm Exchange. They are ready for you, but it takes only a few lines of metadata to turn your existing script into the action. You tell the Stackstorm that these are the positional arguments, these are the key value arguments, and then you run Stackstorm action create, and your existing scripts is now in action, and it has an API, it has the UI, and it can be stitched with other actions with the workflow. So, uh, canonical example, a monitoring thing. You know, like we, for instance, we have the service, when we have a monitoring system, but we sense when Agios, something happens. The sensor, goes to Stackstorm and says, well, there's a problem. We run out of disk space. The automation checks if it is something that we can fix. And if it is, we fix that. If it is something that requires human intervention, we uh, call the platform, maybe Victor Ops or Opsware or uh, PagerDuty and like, wake up, buddy, you need to take a look at that. And this, the simplest thing, the auto remediation, um, you know, takes wonders. Now, what can be automated? Stackstorm is pretty generic and uh, like I got a hammer, I probably can automate everything. So the right question is what have been, what, what we should automate. And we should automate things within a reason. And as the book, the kind of practice of cloud automation system says, we need to automate the irritating things which irritate us too often. You know, things that are easy to automate and then happens often. And uh, what has been automated with Stackstorm? In fact, a lot of things. We, Stackstorm uh, team, are supporting the OpenStack platform and we promote some of the use cases like auto remediation, network automation, but there is a number of things that community is doing with Stackstorm. And I'll just highlight a few of them. Auto remediation probably is the biggest one. You know. Uh, of all the auto remediation tool, Facebook's FBAR is probably the most notorious. And it is notorious because they auto remediate 94% of the incidents. And what they say is it is still a lot. Like for the record, they're not using Stackstorm, but we are friends and we inspire each other architecture. And uh, on the other hand, uh, 
Stackstorm has been used for out-remediating OpenStack installations. Last year in Barcelona, uh, Mirantis presented using Stackstorm to out-remediate the semantic cloud. Uh, the most well-known example of Stackstorm-based remediation is Netflix. They have Winston, which is the application on top of Stackstorm. They put some specific on that. And they really hammer home on why our remediation is better. It compresses the time, it reduces the burnout on the people, and it has the kind of overall positive impact and sometimes it avoids the accidents altogether because the things are remediated at computer time, not at the human time. Uh, network automation. Uh, we are now part of the brocade, and uh, of course we're doing network automation, and not only we automate network, uh, brocade network, we recently launched the integration with Napalm, and uh, Napalm is the uh, uh, similar thing that is the cloud leap for cloud computing that en enables you to uh, automate a number of the uh, uh, network operation systems. And we introduced the um, pack, the automation pack, integration pack for Napalm, and people right now are using Stackstrom to automate a variety of the networking devices. Of course, when it comes to brocade networking devices, we are doing even more. Integration. Uh, oh. Automation suites, uh, sorry. Uh, um, integration. One of our partner, Dimensional Data, uh, put up this slide. They're using Stackstorm to deal with what, they ha uh, what we call an integration spaghetti. Uh, you know that every monitoring tool has an ability to launch the script. And everything nowadays has an ability to receive the webhooks and shoot the webhooks. And once you begin to integrate one thing to another, another thing to another, soon you have a picture like that. And these guys actually got into this mess. The way out of that is like, and the problem with this is once things go south, you want to turn off your automation sometimes. And where exactly do you turn it off here? And uh, using Stackstorm uh, to integrate a variety of IT systems uh, is one of the big use cases. And there is more to that. People are using Stackstorm, dimensional data specifically, doing some security automation. They're replacing the legacy runbook systems, Microsoft System Center Orchestrator, with Stackstorm and say that it delivers a lot of uh, kind of uh, DevOps goodies like infrastructure and code and others. And uh, the guys say also the contributors, they joke that Stackstorm is like the dike tape for the data center. And once you have that, you find a lot of usage for that. Fun stuff. I mean, if you look at Stackstorm Exchange, you will see that there is a variety of interesting packages here. It's kind of the Tesla pack for Stackstorm right now not only can honk the Tesla, but does pretty advanced things with that. And do check out the uh, booth show where our guys are using uh, Stackstorm to control the robotic arm um, as a response on your Twitter tweets about the Stackstorm. So check it out. Um, serverless becomes a trend right now, and it's right now more than a trend. It actually delivers massive value, and uh, this is a picture of OpenWhisk. And if you squint a little bit and compare that with Stackstorm, like we have events, triggers, rules, results, that's what we do in Stackstorm. And now I'm actually, um, it's easy for me to explain what Stackstorm it is effectively. What is the Amazon Lambda and Amazon Step functions? Lambda is actions and sensors, and step functions is the initial workflow that we use. Exactly like that. So, um, and uh, in fact, we are seeing people using Stackstorm for the do it yourself serverless implementations. Tomorrow, look, Wednesday 9 a.m., uh, we have a session dedicated to Stackstorm and serverless as it is related to OpenStack, so please check it out if you're interested, but this is a big and interesting uh, trend. Like, as I say, there is a variety of the use cases for Stackstorm. We have a big platform, and uh, we support some of the use cases, and we do invite people to try it out and see if it applies to their use cases as well, and supply them and maintain them. So, uh, why, you know, uh, when people look at the uh, workflow-based solution, they say, well, why don't I just, like, no one is actually saying, why don't I do that manually? 
everyone wants, wants to automate stuff. But people are asking, why don't I, for instance, why don't I use scripts? Well, uh, everyone is doing scripts. So like, uh, there are some problems with this, though. So, like, scripts are great. And Stackstorm is not saying that scripts shouldn't be used. We're just placing them in the right place, which is a script is an action. However, stitching things together with scripts has um, drawbacks. The workflows are um, harder to write because we all know how to write scripts. Workflow is a little bit awkward, but workflow is superior in operations. Workflow is uh, very reasonable. It, it is transparent. It is not too in compliant language. It is just a series of events. And when something happens, you know that I have a workflow that takes five steps. I'm on step three and I'm foiling, failing. Workflows are resilient. So if the system that runs your workflow goes down, workflow is resilient to continue execution when the system goes back up. And again, this is the virtue of Stackstorm as a system, as a reliable system, because some of the workflow tools out there cannot survive the failure as Techstorm can. And more interestingly, it can survive the failure of the environment. For instance, at the time of the call, the networking may be not available. And Techstorm is trying to reach out to there, but you know, like I cannot create uh, the last VM out of the 100 and my workflow is failing. I don't want to start from the beginning. So we have an ability to restart the workflow from the point of failure. For instance, there is networking failure. You fix the network and it's back. I just go and workflow continues to execute from this point. So workflows are superior in operations. Um, Stackstorm and the future. So um, first of all, we have uh, you know it's uh, 100 million contributors. I don't know if it's 256. It's uh, in binary form. <laughs> so it's uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's an active uh, Apache 2 open source project. We're fortunate to have Brocade supporting this, um, and uh, we have an active community on that. We have uh, a lot of contributions on Stackstorm. There is a commercial version of Stackstorm uh, to respect the fact that a number of companies have policies in place that don't let them run anything in production that doesn't have the commercial support. Uh, but the open source Stackstorm is fully functional, not crippled. Check it out. Um, we have a quite substantial user base. We have about 3,000 um, installations a month. Uh, and uh, the Stackstorm Exchange, uh, the place where we have uh, the integration packs, is filled up with integration with everything you can imagine. Again, full disclosure, some of these integrations are heavily used there for good, and some of them are just scaffolding on that. We don't have much of the um, uh, you know, uh, test coverage on that, but the ones which have co the test coverage has a special icon on that, so look at them. And each of them is represented by GitHub repository. And recently we introduced the community maintainers. Notably, there is an OpenStack pack there that automates all OpenStack actions. Um, so uh, the takeaway here is um, if you haven't heard about Stackstorm, you just did. Um, I invite you to try it out, to use that, and to contribute that, because this is the community effort, and without you, we cannot just bring that. We cannot integrate with everything, so we please invite you to contribute. And when we say contribute, everything counts. You're trying out Stackstorm, getting the ST2 Vagrant, and getting that up in 20 minutes, or grabbing the Stackstorm Docker image, and getting up and running in five minutes, is the easiest thing, you know, try it out, read the documentation, try to do something with Stackstorm, tell us what doesn't work for you. We actually, we grow on negative feedback. Don't tell us what's good, like we know. Uh, tell us what doesn't work, tell us, you know, help us improve. Uh, commit the code. We have people who are contributing uh, to the main code, but we also inviting you con to contribute to the integrations. You are using Jira, help out to make the Jira integration better. You're using a kind of open stack, you're using some particular products, please do help us do that. And then spread the word. Like we have about, you know, it's, uh, 60 people here in the theater. If each of you will tweet about Stackstorm, there will be someone who will know that Stackstorm is an interesting project worth checking out. This counts as a contribution as well. With that, thank you and 
Lastly, uh, we are um, 50 uh, stars away from crossing the 2,000 stars on GitHub. Me, I rate my talks by the number of GitHubs I gather after the talk. So, if you don't mind, go to Stackstorm ST2 and give me a star and I'll see how did I do. Thank you.